Hello, everybody. Um, hey, how's everyone doing? Um, so this is an absurdly titled talk called uh, Radar 2 in Conversation. Um, in it, you don't need to know what radar is. I'll try to explain it. Um, and we'll hopefully get to the end of this by showing everyone how they can build their own chat bot using like completely off the shelf boring materials with no um, large corporation to help shepherd your conversations. Um, my name is Rich Seymour. I am a data scientist at Endgame. Um, how many people here are Taylor Swift fans? All right, then you know who we are. Um, that's my Twitter. Uh, so what is this all about? Um, we're going to learn about what radar is. Uh, why does it have a steep learning curve? Um, what are some options for making it easier? And then let's use machine learning um, to make it a little easier to use. And hopefully, if any of you pick this up and actually use what I show you, um, you can make almost any program a little easier to use if it's a command line interface. Um, anyone fan of Usborne books from back in the day? Literally that guy, me, that guy. OK, cool. Yeah, they had a great um, thing on machine code and um, assembly. That's, they're all free PDFs now. Um, something like Radar was originally a hex editor, and it then became a full reverse engineering tool that, depending on who you're talking to, could compete with Hopper or Ida. One of its main competitive advantages is uh, price. Um, these are like for personal use. It, they cost about this. They cost somewhere between double and quintuple uh, for professional use. Um, so all of these tools are reverse engineering tools, which means they open up a binary and they spit out something like that, which um, from where you're seated looks like garbage. basically garbage, which actually serves my point. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, it's not garbage. That's supposed to be an execution graph of this, you know, basic block calling this basic block and all this neat stuff. Um, but what is radar? Well, radar is like that. It's similar to IDA and similar to these other things, except it was born out of the command line. Um, so you have like supercoder white cork saying, uh, why does this look like a UI from 1975? You have my coworker and Twitter superstar, um, Malware Unicorn, Amanda there, um, saying she's starting to get into radar too. Um, because it is kind of fun, it's a neat tool to use as uh, let's say it as a uh, nice option when Ida doesn't quite work or Hopper doesn't quite do what you want it to do. Um, and also now it even has a GUI of its own um, called Cutter, which you can check out and, and get compiling if you want to. Um, so that's great. That's not re really what this talk is about. Um, so, oh my God, does it really look like that? Oversaturated? Well, I mean, not on here. The not oh, okay. <laughs> I will uh, remind me to get Instagram filters installed. Um, anyway, that's a list of commands that I coolly tilted to the side. Um, if you have Radar 2 open right now, you could hit question mark or I question mark and see it. Um, you would also see that, which is a list of help. That's awesome. I'm glad I made these bigger ones. <laughs> Um, so, for example, if you want imports from IDA, how would you get imports from IDA? Anyone here use IDA or have a helpful thing that would show you? Uh, I don't know how to get it in, in IDA, but in, in Radar 2, you'd type II and hit Enter. Or if you wanted entry point, you'd say IE and hit Enter. Okay, well, but now that that is off the screen, how do you display sections? Anyone remember? I S or I capital S? It was capital S. Um, so it's kind of on this level of um, <laughs> interfaces. I, I used to think that Vim was really the worst thing to get stuck in if you didn't know how to use it. I recently tried um, XSH, X O N S H. And if you love not being able to exit a program, try that because that is <laughs> way above Vim. Um, but it's also kind of cool. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm glad all my graphics really look like garbage because that isn't what this is about. Um, 
So you could do better, right? You could have what Adam has, what uh, Sublime Text, what PyCharm and other things JetBrains have, which is where you sort of type in something and it predictively says, well, you said OOB, so I think you're looking for out of bounds or copy from the whatever, and it will give you an, uh, an offering of things to choose from. Okay, that's kind of convenient. But this was um, a talk about talking to Radar2. So um, what, what am I talking about? The idea would be that a user could be using their neat GUI, whether it's cutter, wow, it just, it just disappears, but <laughs> the, uh, the cutter or whatever down in the, uh, your lower left, while they're also saying stuff at random uh, to their machine, and their machine is offering them little bits of information. Um, I view this as a sort of where the future is heading, whether we actually want it to or not, is that we'll probably be sitting in open offices with everyone wearing, wearing bone conduction microphones and whispering to themselves constantly, and it'll just be this like frenetic nightmare. Hopefully, if you follow this, you can make that nightmare come to life. <laughs> uh, so first step, first step, first simple thing to write down is um, speech recognition. Those two words jammed together are a Python module that Anyone here can use, and right off the bat, you can use CMU Sphinx, which is on your machine, or uh, Google, Amazon, Microsoft, AOL, Time Warner, Pan Am, whoever else is offering uh, voice recognition. Um, and then the second part you need to make, so you have speech to text, great, easy, right? You basically hope it translates what you said correctly. Then you have text to commands. And how we're gonna do that is, in this example, and what I'm going to demo for you, is with something called support vector machines. Um, and if you don't know what vector machines are, that would be like Vectrex. No, that, that joke completely fell over. Support vector machines are one way of classifying labeled data on multiple axes by drawing a plane between this data and that data. And therefore, it lets you say this data versus that data, and this is what I want. Don't worry too much about it. Um, so what you need is training data. So I took that help text and I turned it into a, a JSON file where I took the help text and the command next to it. Really, honestly, the easiest thing you could possibly do. The simplest way you could have those five categories of I, 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 capital I, I, capital I. It was the simplest thing. So this is your basic logic here. You have Sphinx or something translating what you said into text. Then you have that text going into a support vector machine through scikit-learn and into radar, okay? This is exceedingly easy to do, but also deceptively easy to do. Um, I wish that was a little bit easier to view, but that shows you how much code it is to train this model, okay? And that's like nicely formatted at about 15 lines maybe. It's extraordinarily easy. And then you run it. Um, I could run that. And with that test, I'm testing over about six examples with five initial training things. It got four out of six correct. That would have passed a test where I went to college. Um, and it's super easy, right? Everything is great. And you guys are ready to turn this into a startup and pitch it to Y Combinator or whatever. Turns out it's actually not that easy. Um, and at work, like this is something we do for a work thing, and it's really, really, really super hard. Um, but what I like about this in terms of a demo and stuff that you could do for your life is that if you kind of hone it for yourself and the things you would like to say, you could conceivably make this like your own little robot helper that always works. But if you try to make it as a product that you sell uh, to, I don't know, the Sand Hill folks, you'll probably get screwed because A, your data won't cover how one person says, give me the imports, and another person says, uh, I don't know, Washiwan imports or something. You will have complete no way of knowing what someone's going to say. And also you have no way of explaining why it took someone's result and it didn't take someone else's result. So if someone says, give me some imports, and it worked, for them, and someone else says, please give me some imports, and it didn't work for them, you can't explain it. And then just all these random explosions which are explored in detail in this classic paper. 
Um, so since I flew through that, now it's demo time. And that's a demo of a Marine getting attacked by his Marine dog, um, which is like all live demos. Um, let's see what happens here. What's going on? Where's terminal? <laughs> this is going to work. So first I'm going to demonstrate. Um, there we go. Oversaturated or what? So this is the text to command part. Um, so someone come up with a way of asking for one of those things like entry point or uh, imports or what was it, sections? Anybody have any ideas of things to say? See, this is an actual Radar2 user here. Um, this is connecting to a running Radar inst instance that has already done that. Um, anybody else? Uh, yeah, yeah, PDF, right? No, 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 no. Wait, list all functions? I don't even think that was an option, but we're going to type it in. Um, can't figure out what you meant, try again. So, No, because it's only trained to do five things. So, show me imports. I like that one. That one might work. Holy crap. Yeah, that one worked. So, and there it is. Is this the most amazing thing you've ever seen? No, probably not. Um, <laughs> but I promise you that's not a, a dictionary of things. Those are actual, it's a, it's a trained thing, trained on uh, these little bits of speech. And now, if you go to the next level, the broken demo, one might say. It loads up the SVM model uh, as you wait and wait. And then it prints out this error about audio units because I run an old version of OS X because I don't care about security. Uh, import. <laughs> hey, imports. Imports. <laughs> Should not have worked. I'm very excited about that. Anyway, yeah, it's it's this is a ridiculous demo, but um, the code itself is really small. Like, you know, this is the demo with no mic that I prepared, where it just reads from a thing. This is like 16k of code. There's nothing in it, you know. So I, I think the idea of you uh, or anyone taking something like this, training a model. Uh, then doing speech to text and then doing text to commands uh, is really within reach now. Maybe a couple of days, it, a couple of years ago, it wasn't. And you don't have to use um, Alexa or Google or Siri or anything to do it. And I think that's cool. It's not necessarily security related, but anyway. Um, okay, well, we've got five minutes, three minutes. Um, so here are things that this doesn't do that we do in practice um, with our little chatbot at work. Something called named entity recognition. So if you're sitting there and saying, oh, I want to see the imports, or I want to see the entry table, or whatever um, entry point, how do I say go to this uh, specific memory address? Well, this thing right now is only understanding like really big bulk pieces of text. It's not grabbing nouns out of what you're saying, right? So if you want to say go to OXFFFFF82, um, it would never know what to do. It would just say, well, wait, which go somewhere? I don't know where to go. So named entity recognition is something you could add to this on your own. Uh, it's exercise for the reader. Something easier would be copy from clipboard, where maybe you copied something in IDA and you wanted to say go to this uh, memory address, and then it would just say this. What does that mean? I'll check the clipboard and then go there. And the last one would be talking back, which would be the ultimate next level nightmare work scenario, where everyone's computer is yelling at them, and they're yelling at their computers. We're getting there. Um, <laughs> but what I think this goes back to is if you were at the opening rant, uh, we really should let the user be as stupid as they want. And in general, ideally, you can be as stupid as you want when you're interacting with your computer. Um, and I think that's why uh, I am sort of en enthralled by this sort of thing is that it has two layers of abstraction before you actually hit something that could be really, really exploited, like seriously exploited. Um, so you have all these safety nets of, well, even if it completely discombobulated what you said, the next layer is going to drop it. 
And even if the next layer completely Fs up, it only has, in this case, five options of what it could actually send to radar. So I think it actually is a really nice safety guard around the power of radar. It's a little silly, but anyway. So thank you. That's it. Uh, <laughs> If, if you want the code, you have to email me. I gave a talk on chatbots last year. One person emailed me, and within a year, his company was acquired by Verizon. So <laughs> I'm just saying it's probably good luck if you email me for the code. <laughs> uh, any questions? This guy. It kind of all depends on how you set it up. But, but this thing, you can have it listen all the time and just do a callback. So it doesn't need focus. That's it? Repeat the oh, repeat the question. Right. Yeah, the question was, would this be a problem in an environment where there was typing or other sort of noise? And like, absolutely. Absolutely, no question. But that's why you need to get the bone conduction microphone and go. <laughs> Well, yeah, that, that you can do like right now. So radar, well, I can't open it up. But you could, you could have them all open to the same file, because who cares, right? Um, we have a question over here. Yeah, yeah. So the question is, uh, could this have a prefix, like a keyword, like Alexa or um, Siri or whoever else we're talking to these days? Yes. You could. Um, I actually was playing around with doing that. You'd basically say, listen to all audio, listen to all audio. If there's a keyword in it, which you can do with Sphinx, yank that out and then give me the time code right after that and pass that to the next step. So you could, you could actually do it. It's, not, it's well within reach. Yeah, that's totally doable. Anybody else? Yes. That is a really good question. So the question is, can you train speech recognition on domain lingo? Which is one of the main reasons why, for our stuff, we don't use like Alexa or something or other speech to text is that we don't even do speech. Because that lingo of security tends to be um, not real words in English <laughs> most of the time. Um, so if you got crazy with Sphinx, I think you could do that on your own, um, I think it would probably go down to like, what are the phonemes of this thing? And how do you print it in English? It, it would basically get to that level. And it does support other languages as well. Um, yeah, so I think you could. Would it be worth the time? I don't know. Anybody else? No? All right, cool, thanks a lot. <laughs>